Hello everyone and welcome back to the series H085 Microprocessor and Memory Solve Problems. Today we are in the part 2. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, today we are going to solve two more problems on H085 Microprocessor and Memory. Let's focus on the first question. An 8-bit microprocessor has 16-bit address bus. And the pins in the bus are named as A15 to A0. The processor has a 1 kilobyte memory chip as shown below. So this is the memory chip we are talking about. And the address range of the chip is, so we are supposed to find that out. Now we have been given four different options. And as you can notice, in all these four options, we have been given two different addresses. Now what does that mean? Well, these are the starting addresses and these are the final addresses. And that's what is meant by the address range in the question. So, let's try to solve it now. Now, focus on the entire circuit. Notice, we have got the RAM chip. And it was mentioned in the question that the processor has a 1 kilobyte memory chip. Now, notice, this is a RAM. That is, random access memory. Now, in the previous session only, we have learned how to decode a block diagram of a memory chip. Here, at first we have got M cross, then we have N. Now, M is the number of memory locations within the memory chip. Whereas, 8, that is N, it is the number of data lines or the number of bits which each of the memory location can store. Now, 8 bits is 1 byte and there are 1K, that is 1024 memory locations. So, clearly, this is a 1KB memory chip and that too, a random access memory chip. Now, 1K is actually 1024, which is 2 raised to the power 10. Therefore, it needs 10 address lines. And if you notice, we have got A0 to A9, 10 address lines for this chip. On the other hand, the chip can store 8 bits of data, so it also has the data lines D7 to D0, that is 8 data lines which are bidirectional. Now, in the previous session only, we have studied the memory chips, they also have the enable or chip select pin. And this is being activated by this decoder. Now, how did I determine it's a decoder? Notice. It has got three input lines and eight output lines. If you remember, when we were learning about the decoders, for n input lines, any decoder has two raised to the power n output lines. Now, the decoder also has a chip select line. Now, coming to the microprocessor, it has 16 bit address bus, and the range of that is A15 to A0. Now, from A15 to A13, these three lines are used to activate this decoder. And in this decoder, from the line number 4, we are activating the memory chip. So, the output line 4 should be selected by these input signals, that is, from A12 to A10. And thereafter, the remaining pins, A9 to A0, these will help us find the locations within the memory chip that is the 1 kilobyte RAM. Now, the microprocessor has 16-bit address bus ranging from A0 to A15 or we can say in the different way that is A15 to A0. Now, the pins A15, A14 and A13, these are responsible for activating this chip. Notice, these are connected to an AND GET. Now, for AND GET, if all the pins are high, then only the output will be high. That is, this decoder will be activated if in all these pins, we are sending logic 1. Now, once this decoder is activated, thereafter we will need to select the output line 4. And for that, we will have to specify these pins. Now, what is 4 in 3-bit binary? It is 100. So, in the pins A12, A11 and A10, we will be sending 100. 
Now with this combination, both the decoder and the memory chip will be activated. So for all the 1K locations within the RAM, this combination will be same, which will be coming out from the microprocessor. Now in the RAM itself, we have got the address lines A9 to A0. And there are 1K locations. So the locations will begin from all zeros in these bits. Now this is the first memory location within the RAM chip. Now what will be the second? Well, all 0 then 1 and the final address will be all 1's which will be specific to these pins only. And for all of these, the prefix that is from A15 to A10 will have to remain the same. And why so? In order to access all these addresses, both the decoder and the RAM has to be enabled. Therefore, this will be same for all the addresses. Now, if you remember, in the options, we were given hexadecimal representation of the addresses. So, let's try to find out the hexadecimal representations as well. Now, the conversion from binary to hexadecimal is actually easy. All we have to do is group the bits from the least significant bit towards the most significant bit, four at a time. So, what will be the first address? Notice, all ones in here, therefore F, followed by all zeros, all zeros and all zeros, so triple zero in hexadecimal. What about the second address? It's same for the first four bits, it is going to be F, followed by two more zeros because these are all zeros. Finally, for the last nibble, if you notice, 0, 0, 0, 0001 that is 1 in hexadecimal let's try to find out the last address all ones for the first bit so f then 0, 0, 0011 1, 1, which is 3 followed by all ones that is f and all ones once more so one more f so the address range is f000 0, 0, 0, Till F3FF. Let's now check the options for this. Notice option D is only providing the correct choice. Therefore, for this 8 bit microprocessor, which has 16 bit address bus, that is A15 to A0, the processor which is accessing 1 kilobyte memory chip, due to this organization, the address range for the memory chip that is the 1 kilobyte RAM is F000 till F3FF. Let's now focus on the next question. Find the address range for the following 4K by 8 RAM chip. So let's try to solve it. Now in this question, we haven't been given any decoder. It's only the RAM chip. Now since it is 4K by 8, that is, it is supposed to have 8 data lines and since it is 4K, that is 4096, which is 2 raised to the power 12, so clearly it will have 12 address lines. Now focus on the chip select logic. It's a bubbled input, so it is active low pin and to it, a NAND gate is connected, right? Now in this NAND gate, the inputs are A15 till A12. Now the question is, how this memory chip is going to be activated? Well, for that, we need to find out the functionality of NAND. You know, for two inputs, for an AND gate, the combination 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1, 0 will always output in 0. Only if both of the lines are high, then the output is going to be 1. Now this is AND, but in our circuit, we have got the NAND gate. That is, the inverse of AND. So, the outputs will also be inverted. So, when all are 1's, the output is going to be 0. And the rest of the cases, the outputs are going to be 1's. But if you notice, we are actually looking for 0. And why is that? Because this RAM chip 
has the enable or chip select line as an active low line. So let's try to find out the address range now. For A15 to A12, all of them will have to produce ones to the NAND gate so that the output becomes zero. Now A15 will be one, but A14, if you notice, it has a bubbled input. Therefore, for A14 to produce one, we will have to feed zero, right? If the microprocessor sends zero via A14 through the bubbled input to the NAND gate, it will be received as one. But that's not the case for A13 and A12, so we will send one only. Now due to this, the NAND gate will produce zero, and since the chip select is active low, the RAM chip will be enabled. So we are going to have the sequence every time we would like to access any location within the RAM chip. So this is fixed. Now let's talk about the RAM chip. In this, we have got 12 different address lines. So clearly, we will have 12 zeros for the first location and 12 ones for the last location. But for all of them, since we need to activate the RAM chip, the chip select logic is going to be the same. So let's now find out the hexadecimal representation of the address range. Focus on the first nibble, 1011, that is B, which will be followed by 0, 0, and 0. So the first address is B000. What about the last address? It is B. Now, if you notice, the rest are all 1s, so clearly B followed by F, F, F. So, we were supposed to find the address range for this RAM chip, and it is B000 to BFFF. So, in this session, we solved two more problems on 8085 microprocessor and the memory. Alright, people, that will be all for this session. With this, we have come to an end of the chapter 2, which was Fundamentals of 8085 microprocessor. From the next session, we are going to begin a new chapter that is Instructions of 8085 Microprocessor Part 1. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.